Hello everyone and welcome to another Solid Shell security video series. This one is going to be about using meta exploit and using the framework to use and create exploits and exploit systems and create, uh, teach you how to use pen testing techniques. So what we are going to do is we have this machine over here which is running Windows XP and we are going to do the basics of exploiting this machine and taking control. Now what we've gone ahead and done is we installed Icecast version 2.0.0 and we launched the service and we started the service. You're going to have to start the service if you install it and you can just either just leave it up or put it to the system tray. It really does not matter. Okay. All right. What we've already done is we launched the Meta Exploit console. Uh, I know a lot of videos and people, you know, talk about using Backtrack and everything, but this is going to be on a Windows point of view. So this is Windows 7 that we are using. And if you don't know how to access the Meta Exploit console, what you want to do is come down to All Programs, and it's going to be under the Meta Exploit and it's going to be the metal metasploit console so that's how you start up it's going to take some time to start up i think it takes a little bit longer on a windows machine than a linux at least that's what it, that's at least what i've kind of noticed but anyway okay so the first thing is we want to find an exploit for for icecast so if we type in search icecast let's see what it finds okay it's found one of them and this is the one I was talking about. Now I actually tried using version 2.0.1 and I had no luck with the payload exploiting giving me a shell to the machine. So I went ahead and I downloaded 2.0.0. Now there's also many different versions of 2.0.1. There's like release candidates, there's some beta editions, and there's a final version. I used the final version so it may only affect the ones below that. So just to be safe, if you're going to try this at home, go with the version 2. I had no luck using the 2.0.1, but I didn't try the other ones. So, okay, anyway, what we want to do is we want to use that exploit. So what we're going to do is we're going to type use Windows, the HTTP icecast header, and when we hit enter, <laughs> So what it's going to do is it's going to load that exploit up, as you can tell right here. It's brought up the exploit, it's now loaded, and it's ready to be used. So the next thing is we want a payload. Now there are many different types of payloads, and depending on the situation, you probably don't want to use a different payload. So as you can see, this, this is the list of all the different payloads that you can pick from and you can use. Um, we've got different ranks here, so they're ranked based on uh, normal, pretty much. I don't exactly know what the rank is, but there's a rank to them. And then we have a description. So you have different types, and then you have your generics, you have your Windows-based, and just typically Linux-based as well. I don't seem to see any Linux-based payloads for this one. But if you're going to exploit a Windows machine, you want to make sure you're going to use the Windows based payloads, otherwise they're not going to work because Windows and Linux they have their different uh, binaries and everything. I'm not going to go into the whole depth of that, that's the entire lesson on its own, but keep that in mind. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to load one. Um, a really good one, a really common one is going to be the Windows Metaterpreter Bind TCP. This is a great way to connect into the machine and gain shell access. So this is what we are going to use. Uh, meta Metaterpreter you're going to learn to love just because it opens that what I'm going to call a shell connection and gives you shell access pretty much to the machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to do set payload and this is the Windows Metaterpreter bind TCP payload. Okay, we got the, the payload set. Now we want to take a look at the options for this payload. 
every payload is going to have its own set of options that you can use and configure. So if we do this one, as we can tell, this one requires a remote host. And if you look down here, this is what the payload options are currently set to. And you, as you can tell, we are missing the remote host, which is required. So what we want to do is we want to set that one. So what we want to do is we want to do set our host. And the IP on this machine is that guy. So now we have that. And if we do show options again, you can see that it, the current setting has now been set to that IP, to that machine. So now we are ready to do it. Once we've created the payload and we've got the exploit loaded, we are ready to exploit the machine. So we just type in exploit, sending, and there we go. We've got a MetaTerpreter session opened, so it connected, and we are currently now in the machine. So we type in shell, we are now running as the application, we are running as a service icecast. As you can tell we are in its directory, so if we did like a, a dir, we can see everything inside its home directory. We can also, if we wanted to cd, oops, that's cd up, we can do another directory listing. Look at that, we can actually now see everything. So as you can tell, we now got shell in the machine and we've got a lot of power because we are now running as this machine. And because this is Windows XP and pretty much everything is running as administrator, you know, we can we have unlimited power basically. So we'll just, just go and exit this, we're back into the meta interpreter, and we want to type help. This is going to bring up all the many different commands that we can use with MetaTerpreter. As you can see, the options are pretty much endless. And you're going to find out that a lot of these have a lot of use and a lot of power as we move on through the series. So one of them is the process list. As you can see, what we've got running on this machine. And we want to find the, um, there we go, the lsassexe file. What we want to do is we want to migrate into this um, service. So all I have to do is type migrate and the process ID 712. So now we are jumping from this process and injecting into another process. And because we're the same user with the administrator powers, this is a cakewalk. It's really simple. It's really easy. So keep in mind that if you're exploiting a, a more sophisticated machine where there's users and groups and permissions and stuff like that, don't expect this to be that easy. Um, this is also a Windows XP box that's got a lot of the security settings and everything disabled. So this is just more of a demonstration as to what you can do depending on the, the power that you've attained and the access level. So as you can say, see we've migrated and because this is the process that has access to the SAM hash file, we can do a hash dump and get the password hashes. So now we've got the LN hashes and we can take those and we could run them through John the Ripper or something along the lines of that, crack the passwords, and then we can take those passwords and see what else we could access on the system. They might be the same on the network or something along the lines of that. This is why you don't want to keep your passwords the same. So this pretty much ends the introduction tutorial on how easy Metasploit can be and also shows why you want to keep your services up to date, especially if you're allowing remote connections to them. Because this is on Icecast, which is for streaming audio, it means it's going to have a direct live connection to the internet where anyone could access it, which means pretty much anyone could run this and have root access to your server if this was an actual live server. So this is a, an example as to what happens if you run something vulnerable. Now every situation is going to vary depending on security settings and stuff like that. Um, so just take this as like a grain of salt because 
This is a in-house example just to demonstrate what you can really do with meta exploit and there's a lot of stuff that can be done. Alright, so to the next video. See you guys soon. Be sure to like us, subscribe to us, follow us, stalk us, whatever you guys do best. If you don't, well, I'm not responsible for the kittens that are going to watch you and follow you and beg you for catnip until you like the channel. Yeah, something like that. So, see you guys soon.